What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to the New Moon in Taurus workshop. This is a pay what you can workshop. That donation link is below in the description box. Thank you for your support for me and my amazing team. Um, this is my job, so everything you support and donate to us um, really helps this company grow and we can continue to serve. So thank you for that. Uh, if this is your first time joining, welcome. Um, I'm going to talk about the astrology. We're going to pull some tarot cards. Um, we're going to do an energy clearing and a short meditation. This will be under 25 minutes. I'm also now adding one more thing. Um, I'm gonna talk about it at the end of this workshop. It's called the pivot party. Um, <laughs> and I just wanna get a little bit more raw with my own experience and my own struggles and accomplishments and everything like that. So I want, I'll talk more about it at the end. So if you're interested in joining the pivot party, um, that is going to help us shift gears because we just finished eclipse season. We will still be feeling the eclipse energy for a while. Um, really what happens is that in the middle of eclipse seasons, we have six months. So there's eclipse season, which is typically two or three eclipses. That's what just happened. And now we have six months until the next eclipse season. That means that in that middle six month period, we have an opportunity to change our lives. During eclipse season, that's when everything sort of happens and like, you know, comes to culmination. We really understand with more clarity what direction we need to head in. We um, can see the results from something we've been investing in. We understand fully if we want to drop something or leave something or switch gears, etc. So that happens. That big change happens during eclipse season, which we just finished. And now we have six months until the next eclipse season. So in the middle, on the new moons and the full moons, I'm here to help you figure out what to do and how to work with these energies uh, to support you, to benefit you, to figure out what is best for you to be releasing and integrating and applying into your life. And that lets you figure out how you want to change gears, how you want to pivot. So at the end of these workshops, I'm going to start talking about just for maybe two, three, four minutes max, um, my experience, what I'm going through. And I hope that that allows us to engage in new ways. I would love if you guys would go off in the comments and tell me how you are experiencing these shifts, etc. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. But this is the first new moon, the first new moon of your new six month cycle. So welcome. This is a beautifully amazing opportunity because I love this card coming out too, the queen of coins. Um, this is a card that represents investment and figuring out what we want to birth. Why do I say that? Because this is a card that represents fertility. This is a card that is connected to Taurus energy. This is like the middle of spring. In the middle of spring, everything is really, you know, in full bloom and it's like things are starting to open up. We can start seeing the direction that things will be moving in. And then midsummer, we can see sort of what's really happening and then we can figure out, you know, the next stages. But this card is an opportunity for us to really invest our time, our energy, our money in new ways. That is strongly connected to Taurus energy. We are still now in Taurus season. Mind you, we are wrapping it up. Um, Taurus season finishes on the 20th. On um, May 21st, okay, we enter Gemini season. Gemini season. This is my astro calendar. By the way, if you don't have it, you can download it below. Um, and what is funny is that this new moon actually happens at like the end of the season. <laughs> like two days before the season ends, which is fine, it doesn't mean anything. But the next day, we have Mars moving into Leo. So that happens on Saturday, May 20th. That is really important. Why do I say that? Because Mars, Mars moving into Leo becomes very committed with the actions that Mars wants to take. Mars is connected to what we fight for. It can be aggressive. Um, it's definitely assertive, assertive. Um, Mars is connected to what we protect. Oh, sorry. Sorry. 
Mars is connected to what we protect, what we want to fight for. Um, it's how we take action, the things we want to do. It's our impulses, etc. So when Mars, who right now is in Cancer, when Mars is in Cancer, Mars is connected to fire and Cancer is <laughs> very clearly water. So like water and fire don't really mix. Like the water will sort of dim down the fire a little bit. So it's softer. It's not really as assertive. It's not really um, as impulsive. It's more kind of like trying to figure out what it's feeling. How do I want to take action? How do I do this? Maybe really impulsive with how my emotions feel when I feel something emotionally. I want to just react and do something. So maybe you've been noticing over the past, you know, couple weeks that other people have been very emotionally reactive or you've been feeling very triggered. And when you feel triggered, you just kind of want to, and it's just like, whatever, just chill, slow down. Okay. Like think before you act. But when Mars moves into Leo, that is a very different experience. <laughs> Leo is a fire sign. So Leo is fire energy and it's fixed energy. So it's very boom, direct and focused and contained. And when Mars moves into Leo, Mars, how we take action and our assertiveness and what we do and our impulses, when that energy is mixed with the loyalty, the commitment, the focus of Leo fire, it kind of doubles up and it becomes this really strong energy that we can use for commitment and change. That's beautiful because it's also connecting to this new moon in Taurus. The new moon in Taurus is asking you to get more focused on what you wanna be investing your time, your energy, your money into. This new moon in Taurus is asking you to figure out how you want to become more stable and secure, how you want to become more financially independent, how you wanna use your resources or find new ways to bring in resources or maybe set up different channels or borrow or budget, you know, your money, your time, your energy, your connections with other people, etc. Now, what's really important is that, especially again, because Mars is leaving Cancer, with this King of Cups reverse, it's like any of that sort of impulsive, emotional, up and down roller coaster shit that we've been experiencing for a while now, it's just like, I feel like we're we're done. We're done. We're like, ugh, I'm just, I'm tired of feeling so maybe drained also because remember, Mars is our drive. So if our drive is fire and there's water on the fire, then the fire is dim. So our assertiveness, our action, our drive has been a little bit kind of like mm, slipping. So like now that water is gone. And Mars will be moving into Leo and it's like, boom, we go into like high gear and we can start fucking moving again. So what I really like about that is that that, that water softness, that impulsivity, that emotional reactivity, et cetera, that's kind of now being put, you know, over there. We don't need to be using that energy anymore because it's not really here. It's not really affect, affecting us in the same way it has been. And we can focus more on actually committing and building structures and systems. Did that light just go off? I think it did. <laughs> Weird. Um, we can build more structures and systems and foundations to actually create this life that we really want. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is very fucking important. <laughs> okay. It is also very big. This is probably one of the best transits of 2023. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a transit is just planets moving in an area of the sky. Okay. That's called a transit, a transit. <sighs> Jupiter, Jupiter just moved into Taurus. Y'all, <laughs> this is big. This is blessings. This is good luck, good abundance, expansion opportunities. But, and this is a big but, okay, just a big old but. Jupiter expands everything. Taurus is connected, do you hear them laughing outside? Okay, pay attention. <laughs> Jupiter expands everything. Taurus is connected to 
pleasure also. Pleasure seeking, addiction, comfort. So it's like, if we still haven't figured out how to clear that energy, etc., then like we need to figure out what to do because like Jupiter in Taurus is going to expand all of that shit. It's also going to expand all of our opportunities for growth, finances, new um, abundance, um, deeper connections, good friends, good love, good sex, like good, 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 luxury, chill, slow down, rest, figure out how to actually apply and, and build something now. Like maybe we've had a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration, a lot of, I wanna do this and I wanna do this and I wanna do this and I wanna, and now it's time to just expand with like focusing on actually doing it and getting it done and taking action. And that's a beautiful energy here. So we can use that, but I could talk about this for literally an hour. I, I, um, I have for you and for everyone because Jupiter is also connected to blessings and blessings on blessings. So I have a free workshop for you. You can download it below. It is a full hour long workshop with the workbook, just like I always do with the other ones, the $22 ones, but I'm giving it away for free because I just love you guys. And you've been very, 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 very supportive for me for the last two years, just helping me expand and, and yeah, so blessings back to you. Okay. So you can download that workshop below. Um, <sighs> Jupiter and Taurus is amazing. We're going to see a lot of change. So just take that workshop if you want to dive deep. Okay. We also are still in the Mercury retrograde post shadow time. So the two weeks after Mercury stations direct again. Okay. So that is what's happening now. We could still be getting more clarity about some things, technology issues. Like I just had to buy a new laptop and now I'm transferring it all over, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, I'm like, why did you buy a new laptop? Well, because my other one broke like three weeks ago. So like I needed one. So like, yeah, if you need to update things, it's fine. But if you don't need to do something and you're just like, you know, impulsively buying technology and things, then like, it's not really a good idea. But if you need to replace something, go for it. It's fine. Um, okay. The other thing that I really want to talk about, and sorry, my um, iPad is about to die. So I just want to make sure, okay, that I see any other important notes. Yeah, Taurus themes, grounding, stability, practicality, um, figuring out how to actually do something. There's a lot of sensuality and pleasure. Um, also like commitment, loyalty, those are like the overall kind of themes. I'm even too talking about this. I just want to make sure that I get out some of those themes um, for you because it's really important to understand how we want to use this new moon energy to establish certain intentions for what we want to be creating. And that's going to be under the theme of Taurus. So anything that will make you feel more stable, um, maybe picking up a good habit or um, starting a new daily practice or making sure that you are properly budgeting something. Or if you're noticing that you're like, ah, I never really feel like I have enough money. Like now's a good time to figure out how to make more money or to apply for that new job or whatever. You know what I mean? How to use your resources differently or how to ask other people for their resources. Maybe you can share, maybe you can trade, maybe there's other ways of getting what you need and it's not always connected to, oh, I don't have the money. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like Taurus is also a very kind and giving and supportive and reliable sign. So people will be very generous right now. People will be open and flexible and, and ready to help. Um, Taurus can also be a little bit selfish and stubborn. So it kind of is going to go either way. Like you're going to notice if those people are really typically stubborn and selfish, then they're probably going to be extreme. If other people are typically more kind and chill then and helpful and dependable and supportive, then they're probably going to be more helpful and supportive. You know what I mean? So just use that energy to, you know, call in what you need. Now, oh, my iPad just died. Mars moving into Leo I believe is squaring Pluto in Aquarius. And it's also in opposition to Jupiter, I believe. If for, because my iPad just died, I'm sorry. If, um, if something is a little bit off about what I just said, because Mercury's still retrograde, so like whatever. But like the overall energy um, 
I can, I've been feeling into, and I'm going to explain to you what, um, what that's going to feel like for the next, maybe a little bit. Okay. It shouldn't be like fucking two months, three months, but like the next, you know, few weeks, we could still be feeling that energy. And it's like this overall sort of, uh, like we could be feeling a little bit more tense or like some people may be getting a little bit more aggressive or like easily angered. I also feel like in a good way, there's more tension for us to be making changes because we know we need to be making these changes. And if we don't make these changes, then we feel like, eh, we're going to be stuck in these old toxic cycles and it's going to be things that we don't really like, that we don't really want, connections with people or projects that we're like, ugh, I've already like outgrown these and this is falling behind. Like, why am I still doing this? Like today, for example, I bought, this is like the third time I've done it this week. I like, I go out and I see a coffee shop and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go in and get a coffee. And then like the, the whole time I'm going, I'm like, I don't even want a coffee. I shouldn't even be drinking a coffee. Like coffee is very acidic and it's kind of like the opposite of tea. Like if you drink a herbal tea, you feel lighter, you feel expansiveness. If you drink a black coffee, which I love for whatever, well, quote unquote, I love, I don't even really love it, but like my mind still is habitual to it because again, right now we're still in Taurus season. So it's like all of those old habits. So like this anecdote is to help you figure out how Whatever I'm describing is applicable and happening in your life. It's going to maybe look different, but it's like, I have such a habit of like grabbing a coffee. So I go into the coffee group and then I'm like, why am I even here? And in the back of my mind, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? And I can almost like hear my guts being like, are you fucking serious? This is a waste of your energy. This is a bad investment of your time. This is a bad investment of your energy. This is a bad investment of your money. All of these things you shouldn't be doing, all of these things are connected to Taurus energy. All of these things are connected to the new moon in Taurus and asking me to figure out how to better invest my time, energy, money. It's like, why am I continuing to go back into old toxic cycles and habits? And maybe you're just like, it's like, it's a coffee, chill. But like, I don't mind if I drink one coffee on Sunday and I have like, my toast and I'm just like chilling, you know, by the beach in Portugal, like whatever, that's fine. Like we're all human. We should deserve, uh, we should be able to do whatever the fuck we want to do, but you know, with limits. It's like when I'm just like robot man, impulse, addiction, habitual mindset. Okay, now it's time for me to go in and get a coffee again. And it's just like, what the fuck am I doing? And what do I do? Fucking bring the coffee all the way home. I take one sip, oh my God. Lid off, pour it out. Toss it, I'm just like, that was so stupid. This is the third time I've done it this week, but it's so habitual for me. It is so, and maybe for you, it's smoking, it's shopping, it's calling that friend, it's, you know, texting your ex again. It's like going back into like oversleeping or like getting lazy or doing whatever. And it doesn't matter, I'm not here to judge you. I don't give a shit. I'm also a fucking loopy, loopy fucking whatever. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just, for some reason can like, channel and read cards and whatever help people well like bitch pay attention to yourself help yourself like this is an opportunity for us all to be helping ourselves more and it's like what the fuck am i doing when i continue to buy coffee so i can bring it home <laughs> see the like i want it's like ding ding <laughs> hello wake up help yourself more listen to that inner voice that intuition and just trust yourself like this king of cups reverse is also especially with the queen of pentacles here four of cups and the three of swords and the ace of coins. It's like, this is a huge opportunity for us to be understanding our triggers, our habits, our old dynamics and the bullshit that we don't need. This is the first new moon of our new cycle. It's an opportunity for us to pivot. Welcome to the fucking pivot party, bitch. No more pity party. No more pity party. Welcome to the pivot party. And we are going to change our fucking lives because if we don't, if nothing changes, then bitch, nothing changes. And it's as simple as having like those little daily habits. Like I wake up, I get dressed, I'm ready, I leave the house. What the fuck am I doing? Give myself an extra 10 minutes. Wake up, sit the fuck down and meditate. Just breathe. Ground myself. Feel into what I'm feeling today. Is that all my energy? Am I picking up other people's energy? Am I like hearing my parents or my ex or am I thinking about the past or am I stressing about the future? It's like, am I even present? Am I even present? 
It's like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, I can't continue to do that. And Ace of Pentacles. The universe is asking us to change how we behave, to change how we approach life, to change how we take action every day. And with all of this planetary action happening and this Mars opposition and the squares and all, there's like friction. There's all of these parts of ourselves that we're still holding on to the old Taurus. We're in Taurus season. They love to just be habitual and hold on. They don't want to let anything go. Trust me. I know enough fucking Taurus in my life. I love you all, but you hold on to everything. It's like, let it go. Let it go, bitch. So it's like, we need to, we need to let it go. Especially King of Cups reverse when we're ignoring our intuition telling us, why the fuck are you buying another coffee? Stop. And I'm just like, <laughs> uh, one more coffee, please. And then I asked my friend, do you want one? Like my friend, oh, do you want a, a coffee? Also? And he's like, no, nah, I'm okay. And I'm like, just one. And then I get home and I'm like, Bleh, and I dump it out. I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, and I'm human. And my brain plays tricks on me. And I know I want to change. And I have power. And I'm capable of change. But all of these things take time. And it, if the addiction, if the hold, if the connection, if the story in your mind is so strong, then it's going to take more time than, you know, it's not going to be easy. So it's like, that's fine. We just need to respect ourselves, respect our process. We need to just trust everything unfolding. And we need to just know that whatever is happening is happening for the best and highest good. And here we are. But this Ace of Pentacles is asking us to invest in a new way. There's a new door that's open. Okay. That's what Eclipse season does. It opens doors. It opens portals. Okay. Boom. Portal open. Go through it. Go through it. Join me. I'm just going to fucking do it because I've been hearing these messages for so long. My intuition is now so much louder. It's like sometimes I actually hear literal fucking voices in the back of my head. I'm like, Ooh, child. It's like this shit is getting too loud to ignore. So I'm just going to trust it. And that's what we're going to talk about in the pivot party every two weeks. I'm going to tell you what my struggle, what my life is looking like. And please, in the comments, tell me, like, what does your life look like? Are you also losing it? Are you also trying to, like, invest? Like, is whatever I'm saying to you making sense? Does it resonate with your story in some capacity? Remove the coffee example. Just that overall energy. Is that applicable in your life somehow? Are you trying to also make those changes? Like, we're all human. We're all feeling this energy on some level. Are you aware of it or is it is it in the background running? And and it needs to be brought forward. It needs to be committed to. We need to figure out how to make more available time and space for ourselves to have a daily practice that lets us figure out what is best for us in that day, in that moment. And like, we can do that. But like four of cups, four of cups. We can only make better choices when we decide to recognize that some of our old choices are not the best. And that's fine. It's not a judgment. I'm just saying before me drinking a lot of coffee was good. I was in school. I was like needing comfort. I was doing whatever. I was working like 12 hours a day and trying to pay for fucking college and trying to do all these things and live this lifestyle. And just, whatever it was, but like coffee served me before and it doesn't serve me now. And that's fine. Again, Four times a month, every Sunday, I can still go to the beach and have a sandwich with my dog and drink a coffee and that's fine. But it's like, something needs to change, okay? So the tension we're feeling, the friction we're feeling, the internal emotions, intuition, action, everything being in opposition or just feeling like, eh, recognize it, take an opportunity to clear it and to focus on investing in the new. Okay? I love you. That's it. I want you to close your eyes now. I'm going to clear your energy and we are going to um, just focus on a little bit of a short visual meditation to see whatever you want to invite in to your life during this Taurus eclipse. Sorry, not an eclipse, not an eclipse. This um, Taurus new moon. So close your eyes. You can just focus on your breath. You can inhale. Exhale. And I just want you to imagine 
that there is a green fire burning in front of you on the ground. And now I want you to imagine that you have a golden comb. And you're gonna use that comb to just comb out any tension in your body. If anywhere is tight, just comb it out. If you notice any stuck energy anywhere on your body, just use the comb to comb it out and then just toss it all into that fire. Down your arms, the front of your body, over your head, the back of your body, and just toss all of that energy that you're picking up into the green fire. Now I want you to imagine that white light is pouring down from above and it is washing you clean. It's adding a layer of protection to your energy field, to your physical body. It is increasing your life force energy. I'm going to use different distance energy symbols to help amplify this protection and amplify this recharge. So just imagine that white light is pouring down, washing you clean and recharging your energy fields. And as we connect deeper with the breath, I invite you to just visualize can be one thing, it can be two or three, but just visualize what stability means for you now. And how does it feel when you see that picture or that video or that movement or that person or that experience or whatever you are seeing or thinking about when you think about stability and a strong foundation? What does it actually feel like in your body? because that is going to help you attract it faster. It's the emotions that like a magnet pull in the experience. So feel it in your body, what it feels like to have stability and structure, even if you're just faking it. How can you create more financial security and safety? more financial independence and stability in your life. And as you're thinking about it, as you're seeing different ways where you're getting new ideas or inspiration or you're just revisiting an old idea, feel it in your emotions and attract that energy into your experience. Feel like you have all of that money. You have that financial independence. You have all of the resources. Feel like you can budget things properly and you have enough. You're not worried or thinking about where it's coming from. You're trusting that it's there and you know that it's there and you're ready to accept it and use it because it's already yours. So think about that and feel that in your energy field at the same time as you attract it towards you. Now think about what kind of daily practice or what kind of connections you need in your life. Do you need to chat with friends more? Do you need to bring on a coach or therapist? Do you want more support from some of your friends or your family? maybe a lover. What do you value now? That before maybe wasn't so important to you, but now you value it. Taurus is connected to Venus. Venus is connected to our value system. So when you feel into what you value now, maybe it's, something about your connections, maybe it's more about your health, your daily practice and your routines. 
When you think about what you value and you feel into it, you feel that strength, that health, that commitment, that independence. Is there an idea or inspiration for action that you can take? Are there any other messages or ideas or energies that you need to receive right now? You can open up, you can ask your guides, the universe, your higher self to bring you any messages in this last moment of the meditation, or just set the intention that you are open to receive their guidance. And if it's not now, Slow down through your day. Take more time for yourself. Rest more, chill more, and allow those messages to come through. When you're moving slowly, we leave more available space and attention open for all of these ideas and downloads and this inspiration to come through. So just set the intention now that you are open to communicate and to receive the guidance. And when you're ready, give gratitude for all of the work you're doing and for your guides and their support and the universe and its support. And as we finish this off, I welcome you back into the space. You can bring some gentle movement into the body. Bring your awareness, awareness into your feet, into your arms. And when you're ready, open your eyes. I hope that helps um, give you some support with figuring out what you wanna be doing next. I invite you now to pause on my face if you can catch it. And you can just write a list under this new moon in Taurus, the first new moon the fresh start of my six month cycle, I welcome in the following. And then just write your list. Oh, pa, 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 pa. Did you catch me? I don't know, that was a pretty quick one. <laughs> okay, that is it. So thank you for your support. Um, good luck with this six month cycle. This is the first new moon. So very important that we're actually taking action right away. Gemini season is next. Gemini season is a fucking vibe. It is a different energy. So if you are interested, the Gemini season workshop is below. Also the Jupiter in Taurus workshop is free. Download that one for sure. Um, but also just like take the Gemini season workshop because it's lit. I promise. Um, if you're interested in signing up for our daily text messages, you can do that below. All of our other things are below the donation link. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Please leave a comment below. And we're going to talk a little bit now about the pivot party. And um, that's that. All right. Ciao. If you're still here, <laughs> welcome. Um, so I've already kind of talked about what I'm giving up. Um, so my commitments are going to be, and I'm going to have a little journal that I kind of keep a list in. I also might use my um, astro calendar to mark down like a little check mark. Did I do it? Um, but I am here because I would like the help from all of you to keep me accountable. Like, am I doing what I'm doing? And that is the intention that I want to set here with all of us is that we can just sound off in the comments and we can support each other and see like, are we really following what we committed, what we said we would be doing? So if not, maybe we can support each other. Maybe we just, maybe we can just have open dialogue. And I think I'm gonna also host some like other private closed room, closed room um, events and stuff like that that are more connected to this like pivot party idea. But <sighs> my commitment is a daily practice, okay? So some breath work, even just focusing like, Five minutes of breath work, five minutes of journaling, five minutes of quiet meditation. That's it. 15 minutes. Done. Okay. Water. Lots of water. Okay. Um, coffee. Obviously. No more coffee. If on Sundays I want to have one or two maximum 
coffees just to gift myself that, then I will do that. I'm flexible. Okay, cool. Like, I'm not a fucking lunatic. But, like, Monday to Saturday, like, no. No more coffee, okay? Um, also, moving the body. I want to show up more on YouTube. I want to be a little bit more invested into growing and delivering more services on YouTube. And I want to become a little bit more structured with my company. Um, that is why some of you maybe watched my very public YouTube meltdown <laughs> two weeks ago because we were practicing using a new um, streaming platform called like Riverside, I believe. And anyways, Google Meets the video was all fucking like uh, not good. So we switched over to Riverside and it live streamed a meltdown 35 minutes on YouTube. Like I was crying. I was in my underwear on my bed with like my TV. It was ugly. Anyways, that kind of inspired me to be like, you know what? I actually don't give a shit. Like, I don't care because I'm fucking human. So here I am. So um, that made me feel like, okay, well, if we're going to have a meltdown anyways, why not let people know where I'm at? And to be completely honest, the last two, three weeks, I've been like really kind of depressed. Um, yeah, I've been really low energy. I've been really kind of sad. Like eclipse season was like really hard. And like, I just like miss people in my life. And um, I'm kind of like sick and tired of like my old bullshit habits. And it's just like, life is fucking challenging sometimes, you know? So yeah, here I am, I'm raw. <laughs> this is real. And just because I'm like a psychic on the internet and I like can channel good information doesn't mean that I always follow it. Doesn't mean that I don't have my own bullshit and my own like traumas and like whatever, so. Yeah, anyways, I don't think I need to cry on my first uh, pivot party, but that's who I am. <laughs> I'm here, and um, thank you for still uh, <laughs> loving me, and I still love all of you, and I would be very happy if you all feel comfortable also sharing about what you guys are experiencing, and we can just support each other, okay? So, I love you guys. Burn, burn. See? Support each other, community grows. I love you. I'll see you very soon. Ooh, that's cute. Like, I cry, but I'm still cute. <laughs> okay, bye.